What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Elgato 4K 60 Pro Capture Card. We'll take a look at it in this video, go over the pros and cons, show you some gameplay footage, and all that good stuff in case you're interested in picking this up. And this is one of the first consumer grade capture cards just for 4K 60 FPS gameplay capture on the market right now. And it essentially works the same way as their HD60 Pro Capture card from last year, but you can now take advantage of the 4K capable output from consoles like the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, as well as your PC, if it's strong enough. Inside the box, you have the capture card right there with a nice new texture on the back plate. It's like this abstract MC Escher kind of look. I'm really liking it. It's a nice addition as well for its physical appearance inside your PC. It's all about aesthetics, you know? And you also get an HDMI cable as well, so you can get this hooked up immediately if you didn't have an extra one lying around already. Plus a little Elgato emblem sticker that you can attach to your PC, uh, like most hardware manufacturers include with things like CPUs, RAM, and stuff like that. And to give you a better idea of its size, if you're taking a look here at this EVGA GTX 1050 I have, it's roughly the same size as that, I'd say, just to give you a better idea of how it looks. Now on the back side you have your HDMI in and out clearly labeled which is good with your consoles or PC going to the in slot and the output going to your TV or your monitor. And since you use this with your desktop PC, uh, it's not compatible with laptops, it's going to plug directly into an available PCIe 4X lane on your motherboard and it's also going to work if you plug it into an 8 or a 16X lane. Then once you plug it in coupled with that nice new backplate this year, you have this new glowing Elgato logo on the side to let you know it's on and receiving power. Now you are going to need high end hardware for this. Their specs page lists requirements for 6th gen Intel Core i7 or AMD Ryzen 7 CPUs with a 10 series NVIDIA graphics or the new Vega graphics lineup. You can also use a GTX 980 Ti. My buddy verified it does work for him just fine because he also picked this up. Pretty much you're going to need hardware capable of 4K gameplay in the first place. And besides 4K 60fps, you can also record at 1080 60, 1080 up to 144Hz and 1440p up to 144Hz. So the regular gameplay capture software does not record in 4K. You have to go and download their new 4K capture utility program for those higher res captures. But you can still use the old uh, game capture program for anything below 1080p 60fps. And I'd say the new 4K utility is pretty bland overall. I do expect some new uh, updates and changes to be made as time goes on. But here you can go in and change the video encoder, the video recording format, and the recording bit rate from 35 megabits per second all the way up to 140 megabits per second. So this is what you're gonna use to record that 4K capture. Now a quick disclaimer before I show you guys some gameplay footage. Um, with my camera, I record at 4K 30 FPS. So even though the card itself can record at 4K 60, this video file itself is 4K 30 FPS. So keep that in mind, even though the gameplay you're gonna be watching isn't 60 FPS. Let's check it out. Back to the air on second down, wins. Taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Now on first down. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Torrey Smith, 31 yards. And the Eagles are able to cash it in for six. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's... Turbo laser neutralized. One left. Overriding the East Station. 
So all the footage you've seen so far from my Xbox One X has been recorded at the 35 megabit per second bit rate. But here this gameplay is recorded at the higher 140 megabit per second bit rate. And just for some info on that, 35 is going to take 15.4 gigabytes an hour and the 140 will be 61.6 gigs an hour. But good news here is side to side, as you can see, you really can't notice a huge quality difference between the two, especially with YouTube's compressions and stuff. So you can still get really great 4K quality at a lower bit rate to save some hard drive space. Also in the 4K utility, as I showed before, for the encoding, you're gonna want your GPU to handle it. And as you can see here with the gameplay capture, our GPU usage is averaging around 15%, with CPU usage averaging around 14% use, while staying at around 33 degrees Celsius. But once you pick the internal software encoding, it definitely is gonna take a performance hit on your PC. Now we're seeing up to 34% GPU usage with 51% CPU usage and a jump to 57 degrees Celsius. So I just wanted to do this little test to show you the difference here. Definitely gonna to wanna to use your GPU encoding in the software for all your gameplay capping. Then before we move on, you cannot actually stream 4K 60 FPS from Elgato's 4K utility software. You're gonna need to use third-party programs like OBS or something to handle all of that. But honestly, if you're streaming 4K 60 FPS, you're gonna need a hell of an internet network to handle it. Now, one thing to point out is there is no 4K upscaling built into the capture card itself. Since we have an NVIDIA GPU and it's using the NVENC to encode it from the chip on my GPU, you can actually record, say, 1080p PS4 footage and have it record 4K on your PC, and it'll look just fine. So as we wrap this up with pros and cons, obviously if you're recording gameplay footage for your YouTube channel and you need 4K 60 FPS, this is gonna have you covered. Now, it is $400, and before you freak out, exit out of the video, take a look out there. There are some other capture cards out there that could do the same thing as this, things like uh, even from Black Magic, but the price of those is double this, at around $800 and up. This is only $400. So while it's not budget friendly in the sense that it's not, you know, cheap and affordable, if you need something like this, then it is going to be budget friendly because $400 is a lot less than $800 and some of the other competition out there at around 900 and up. So keep that in mind. It's, it's still one of the best options out there for the price. And obviously with that 4K 60 FPS gameplay, you're getting great quality overall, even at a lower bit rate when you're recording. So it's gonna still look great and you're gonna be saving hard drive space, which is always a plus. Easy to install, gets right up and running once you download the software, always good. For some cons, um, I would have liked to have seen a display port on the back. It was one of the biggest complaints that I saw last year when I reviewed the HD60 Pro. And since you can just have this in your PC at all times, if you're using it to capture PC footage as like a pass through, I think having a display port would have been nice just so you could, you know, still get 144 Hertz on your display and stuff like that. So that would have been nice. And like I said earlier with the 4K utility program, right now it's just very bland. You can't even go in and customize things or even check like your audio levels. So that's kind of a bummer. It's nowhere near um, like how user-friendly the Elgato game capture software is. Nothing like that. And you don't get that instant uh, like game preview like you do with the game capture software. There's a bit of delay, but um, I do expect that to change over time. So the 4K 60 Pro, $400, definitely up there, but it's gonna be the best option right now for what you need. And that if, if you do need to record 4K 60 FPS gameplay, this is gonna be definitely for you. So if you wanna check it out, I'll have it listed in the description down below. And I hope you liked this video. Hope it helped you out. If it did, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.